Well, thank you guys for coming out today. It is really great to see you guys. I got a bit of a script to follow, but I always go off script. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. Thank you all for coming out today. It is a real honor for me to see you all and a blessing to be with you here today. Why are we here today? Jesus! Sunday school answer, Jesus. That's good. Justice and mercy. Equal protection. Equal protection, as we were chanting earlier. Equal justice. Amen. We're here to support HB 948, yeah. the abolition of abortion Woo. in Texas Act. Yeah. We're here to interpose ourselves on behalf of our preborn neighbors to rally around our civil magistrates who have put themselves on the front line on this issue. When you see righteousness being put forth in our government, it is necessary for Christians to support and to encourage those men and women who would seek to honor God's commands in our laws. In May of last year, the Republican Party of Texas took a bold stand. For years, the pro-life movement has sought to make lie, uh, laws that comply with the various federal court rulings on abortion. But instead of seeking to comply with the infamous Roe versus Wade ruling, it chose to simply say no. No to the U.S. Supreme Court. With the support of nearly 90% of its delegates, the party issued a legislative priority calling on the Texas legislature to, quote, abolish abortion by enacting legislation to stop the murder of unborn children and to ignore and refuse to enforce any and all federal statutes, regulations, executive orders, and court rulings which would deprive an unborn child of the right to life. Sorry, I get a little bit worked up about this. Go ahead. <laughs> that was the will of the delegate body as I read it. Yep. And speaking with many voters across the state, that is what they want to see from their 85th Texas legislature. Yeah. Some in Texas, some in the Texas legislature have listened to the delegates' wishes and answered the call to completely abolish abortion in Texas. You see some of them up here with me today. And we will hear from them shortly. February 23rd, two days ago, was the anniversary of the start of the Battle of the Alamo. Come on. Now you might think that this was planned that way, but we're not that smart. <laughs> that might, it might be what you call God's providence. Yeah. Now we in Texas, we, we love our Alamo lore. And one famous Alamo tradition that comes to us is the story of Lieutenant Colonel William Barrett Travis asking for his men to decide if they were going to stay and fight the army of thousands outside their walls, though they were woefully outnumbered. Now Travis, drawing out his sword, drew his line in the sand. Yeah. On that day, he asked his men to step across that line if they were willing to stay there and to die to make the advancing army pay dearly for every life they wished to take. Now, considering there were no survivors of this battle, we don't really know if this story is true, but it is a great story. <laughs> now, we have drawn our own line in the sand. Come on. Yeah. 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 Our line is to our legislature. Yes. Yeah. We have drawn it out and we have asked them to step across. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Will you cross over and do what God demands of you? Yeah. Cross the line. Come on. Will you seek to establish justice? For the least of these are littlest pre-born neighbors. Yes. Or will you cower in fear of some other higher authority, some court of men and women who will tell you that no, you must allow the murder of children, or no, those children don't deserve equal protection and equal justice. The Supreme Court is not the supreme being. Come on! If we are unwilling to say no to the Supreme Court, what have we made it? God. 
If we are unwilling to say no to evil, what does that make us? What we're asking you to do t today is to say with the apostles, I'm sorry, but we must obey God rather than man. We refuse to continue this treadmill of regulating murder. We wish to establish justice for the preborn by providing for their equal protection under law. The exceptions in Texas law, which create special classes of people who are allowed to murder children, must be removed. They are grossly inequitable. Isaiah 10 says, Woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees. The writers who keep writing oppression to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of my people of, of their right, that widows may be their spoil and that they may make the fatherless their prey. God takes the laws which we create very seriously. Those laws which rob the poor, spoil the widows, and prey on orphans, those are iniquitous decrees. And they are worthy of God's judgment. Leviticus 20 says, Say to the people of Israel, speaking to Moses, If any one of the people of Israel, or the strangers who sojourn in Israel, give any of his children to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. God says, I myself will set my face against that man who did that thing, and I will cut him off from his people, because he has offered his children to Molech. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on to tell the people around that man. And if the people of the land do at all close their eyes to that man when he gives his children to Molech, and they do not put that man to death, then I will set my face against that man and against the entire clan. My friends, the biggest threat to Texas security does not come from terrorists. It does not come from illegal immigrants. It doesn't come from the federal government. The biggest threat to Texas is the wrath and the judgment of God. Can there be any doubt that a people who fail to put a stop to such a grave injustice as abortion deserve the wrath of God? 50,000 abortions in Texas every year. It's over that. And that's only the ones we count. But there is hope, my friends. If we humble ourselves, if we turn from our wickedness and repent of our sins, perhaps God in His mercy will spare us. He is a God who offers forgiveness to all. Amen. Human beings are created in the image of God, and we are endowed with him, by Him with a right to life. Indeed, it is God who has formed each of us in our, in our mother, own mother's womb. Most powerfully, God Himself chose to enter into this world as a human baby, formed in the womb, womb of a woman in order to redeem the world from sin, including the sin of murder. For those who repent, He is faithful to forgive. It is time for us as a people to, per to repent of permitting and committing the sin of murdering innocent children. Let us turn away from seeking to comply with a federal court opinion. Let us turn away from seeking to regulate murder when God calls us to establish justice let us obey God and ignore Roe. Yeah. Equal protection. Equal justice. We the people demand abolition. Thank you. My good friend Bradley Pierce will be coming up next and he's going to tell you who we're going to hear from after him. Thank you.